Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the weekly contest 220 on Need Code Jump Game 6. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Need Code. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, okay, so during the, so I solved this problem during the contest. I'm going over my thought process. Feel free to kind of, you know, and as well as the solution, obviously. But during the contest, uh, I kind of recognize this problem uh, and actually it's one of my weak points uh, of the jump game series. I know that's some sort of greedy, but I still have to kind of figure out how to read, right? Um, so for this one, the tricky thing is... Um, for me, looking backwards or forwards, um, and as I was solving this problem during the contest, I did just that. I go, okay, can I look forward? Is there a way to go, you know, uh, go k elements to the right, and then you know, do some some kind of weird math or whatever, and then figure out the best score, right? And the answer is yes, maybe. So this is actually um, a dynamic programming problem, or not this problem, but. Uh, this solu this proposed solution is a dynamic programming solution where you have a dynamic, uh, you know, for each K, you know, you get the minimum score for a DAG, or, you know, or max score on a DAG or something like that, longest path on a DAG, even though there's negative numbers, but that's still okay because it's a DAG. Um, so, however, and I, I'm not going to go over that too deeply because uh, it, there's a lot of overlap with other problems and maybe uh, if you do want to go over that, um, maybe check out other jump game earlier jump game videos but so i'm going to assume that you know that solution uh, and the short answer that is that it's going to be too slow because if you do that not dynamic programming it's going to be all of n times k uh, unfortunately if you look at constraint n is 10 to the fifth and also k is 10 to the fifth which is basically 10 to the fifth square which is way too slow uh, so then Immediately, so I was hoping a little bit, and I look at the constraint, I go, okay, well, that's not going to be good enough. Let's kind of look for um, something that's similar to the other jump men's, to be honest, and this is where practice comes in. Um, you know, some kind of looking greedy solution looking for it. Um, I struggled with that for a couple of minutes. I couldn't figure out anything. So then I start mentally thinking about, okay, you know, so there are two ways to think about this, right? Which is that at each cell, uh, each jump, each index, uh, we can jump forward one, two, right? Um, and, you know, and we'll figure out how, which one to jump on. But oh, another way to think about it, which is similar to the dynamic programming, because you can also do it in both directions as well, which is that, okay, for each cell in the middle, say, um, what is the best way to get there? Um, meaning, what is the max score coming to the cell, right? Uh, so, and in another way to to ask that is that, okay, for k is equal to 2, and this negative 2, or it doesn't even matter which the cell score is, because you just add it no matter what, uh, which is that on the left k element, what is the max element? And for me, once I am able to phrase the problem in, in terms of this question, uh, it, it, ring, it, it ring the light bulb, I mean, ring the light bulb, that's not the right phrase, right? Ring the bell, or lit the light bulb, whichever proverb you prefer. Um, it's not even a problem, but it's just a saying. But anyway, yeah, so now for each element, you get the max element to the left side. And what, what does this mean, right? Um, well, I I actually have a video describing mono queue and how to solve mono queues uh, problem. And, and to be honest, the first half of that, uh, the two-part video and the first video doesn't even talk about mono queue. It just talks about the invariant and the problem solving and how you solve this problem. The mono queue part or the mono monotonic part of that queue uh, allows you to get it in linear time, which is not necessary for this problem for me, so I didn't solve it this way. But looking back, I could have solved it this way. But again, during contest speed, I'm trying to solve it as fast as possible, right? And for me, like it's not worth thinking over. You know, to, to optimize log n unless I have to, and I didn't have to. So, uh, so I'll go with that a little bit. But that's basically the idea. Um, and and the monotonic part um, is an emergent um, property of the fact that you have basically, essentially, like a sliding window of sorts. Again, even though I know that this is similar to Q2 in that regards, you have a sliding window max uh, of the last, k elements right so that's basically is, is that you know from negative two you go to four well we just shift from negative one to negative two and then from that um you could do a max q of length two and that's basically all you're looking for right um and that would solve your problem exactly um so 
I'm not going to describe in this video uh, that much about how to do the proof and stuff, only because I'll put a link below on the mono queue video. And because this is basically a cookie cutter mono queue problem, once you understand mono queue well enough. So if you go over that video, let me know if you have any questions. But once you understand that video and how to construct the problem and the solution in that way, um, you'll understand this problem. So I don't want to repeat myself too much. Um, but yeah, uh, but that being said, I'll go over my solution, which is not the MonoQ solution, even though it has the exact same property, except for the time complexity. But for me during a contest, it it it, it is a, a few of things to prove and to verify rather, uh, even though, you know, it's, it's trivial, but for me, it's just, um, you know, every second matters on a contest, right? And on this, uh, in this contest, if you look at my, my rank, I actually finished one second behind the person ahead of me. So, you know, that's my excuse. Um, and I end up did spend about five minutes for this prom, even though I, um, even though I thought I struggled a little bit more on this one, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, but once you're able to phrase the question in a good way, then that's how I did. And I think my solution, even though, oh, it doesn't have the mono queue and it doesn't, it's not linear time as a result. Um, I think it's more intuitive um, to see. And and that's why I'm going to explain it. So basically, this is my code. First, n is equal to length of nums, which is what it is. Uh, I call this dp, but it's really, eh, you could call it dp if you like. But basically, this just gives me the best score for a given cell. Um, so that, you know, like, when I'm at negative 6, um, you know, this is the best score, including the negative six up to this point to get to negative six, right? So the, so for example, um, yeah, in this place, the best score to get here is going to be one. Here is going to be uh, negative four, presumably starting from one. This is going to be negative nineteen. I, this is so weird because you're also coming from one, where four is going to be go from negative four, which is so the best score is going to be zero and so forth, right? So that's basically what my DP is. Uh, and instead of using some sort of mono queue, I keep a sorted list in C or Java. I think there's a a, um, a multi set or something like that that you can use probably, and so that you can get the minor element out, or in this case, the max element out of that. So basically, that's what I did. I I go, okay. Um, so this is actually the most of the work on this problem, even though it looks really simple as an if statement. Basically, if it's the first element, well, then you just, you know, there's no prior element, right? You just take the first element um, from the list, and that's your score. You know, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, otherwise, your current score is just going to be this thing, which gets you the max score of the window that we were talking about. And we just care about a window of size K. Um, and and yeah, and then this is also just the cell that we're stepping on. So this is now the max score, the previous max score that of the, of the K steps that we could be coming from, plus the current score. So this is now the best score, right? Because you have to start at uh, array zero. So, okay. After that, we set DP index as you go to best. This is just for us to keep track of so that we can remove it later. Uh, and then we add it to the list after we, you know, because this is now, so we want to add it to the list so that the next element can use this element to jump from. Um, and then here is if, um, if now, this is just going if, and maybe another way to write this is an, an alternate way is if length of S sub list is greater than K, then we remove this element. These two are equivalent, uh, though this is what I wrote during the contest. Um, they're both, this, you could kind of um, show why th these are the same, but basically this is, okay, now the sorted list has more than K elements, so we have to shrink it by one element so that it remains K element. Uh, so that's basically what I did. And this is also why we have to keep track of the previous um, scores so that we can remove it from the list when we're ready. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once you do it for every element, every array, then now we just return it for the last element, uh, which is where you want to land. And that's going to give you your score. So let's go over complexity, right? Uh, for the sake of argument, uh, let's just say sorted list is log n. I know that there's some nuance in that, but let's just say it's log n uh, and, and in C++ and Java, these are gonna be log n libraries. So uh, from that, for every element in the array, we have 
you know, we do one add and maybe one remove. So it's going to be log n number of operations. And we've, for, so each loop takes log n time. You have n of them. It takes n log n time in total. Um, yeah. In terms of space, this is going to be linear. This is already linear. So linear space, uh, n log n time. Again, if you really pay attention to this, th this can be implemented uh, as a mono queue. So if you already have a mono queue um, uh, library, you can actually even plug this in and call it. I, I don't have one ready, and I, I only like writing during the contest. So I, I you know, yeah. Let's say you have this right or max queue. Maybe that's a better name. I like that name better. Um, if you have someone like this, this code actually doesn't change. So, uh, so this that's the power of abstract ADT or abstract ADT, abstract data type. And in this case, if you have a max queue, uh, you're gonna have linear time and linear space. And again, I'll, I'll put a link to the mono queue video below. Um, and yeah, uh, that's all I have for this problem. You could watch me solve it during the contest and just think it through it a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think. I'll, you know, ta-da. Okay. Oh, two people already finished. People are really fast. Okay. Sum of order. Hard, maybe. Don't remember how to do this. So one. Basically, we want the previous pass from here. Right. This is one, and then we carry it. Okay. So here we look at the last two elements. Here we so we get the max on the left. That right okay something like that a eh, little bit weird but it's what it contains Import. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is get the previous sliding window. So here, uh, so TP index is equal to the max of sorted list. So that's list of negative one. Which is quite best. Mm. 
numbers of index okay if index is equal to zero then press is equal to just a number minus k Uh, hey, thanks for uh, watching this video explaining the problem. Uh, let me know what you think. Ask questions because then I can answer them preemptively or join the Discord. Uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button as well if that works. And hopefully I'll see you again. Bye-bye.